Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for my week 22 plan with me. Today I'm going to be setting up for the 25th through to the 31st of May, but before we get into that, as per usual we're just going to have a look at how this week was going. So as you'll remember from last week's plan with me, this layout had a few more sections compared to a couple of the weeks prior. So we have a section for each day of the week, a space for a to-do list, a gratitude log, a review of the day, a water tracker, a steps tracker, and then a weather tracker. As you can see, it's been used to varying extents. For the weather in particular, I really only put this in so that I could fill the space, and I'm probably going to wait until Sunday and just fill them all in at once. Review of the day, I haven't done yesterday's, and we're not quite at the end of today yet, so I haven't quite finished that off. Similar idea for the gratitude, and I do still have to fill in my steps from yesterday. In terms of the to-do list, I did start writing a to-do list, just not in my bullet journal. Because I didn't have it handy when I went to write it. So at some stage I hopefully will transfer that to-do list into here. I have been enjoying this layout, I think there's a bit too many things to track for a school week. So for the week that's coming up, I am going to simplify a little. Flipping on over though, just as a reminder, any of the equipment I use in today's setup is linked in the description box below. In terms of the time taken for today's layout, this one took about 23 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings. Of course, that time doesn't include the penciling in, so we're going to round that up to about 25 minutes. In terms of questions that were left on last week's video, our first one comes from Courtney who asked, For my question, what is your least favourite food and most favourite food? Well, hands down, favourite food is sushi. Other semi-favourites would have to include pasta, donuts, a good bowl of cereal, and well-seasoned hot chips. Whether that be chicken salt or peri-peri salt or whatever else. Least favourite food? The first one that comes to mind is cauliflower. I just can't stand cauliflower. Also not a big fan of things like lasagna or spaghetti bolognese. I'm quite a fussy eater, so there are a lot of foods I dislike, but picking the most disliked food is tricky. <laughs> Our next question comes from Mickey Davis, please let me know if I said that wrong, and their question was, what is one product that you have to have for bullet journaling? Is it a great pen, a certain type of journal, thoughts? For me personally, it would have to be a journal with quality paper. I'm totally fine using pens that aren't great quality. But if the paper quality of the journal I'm using is poor, that would really get to me. This question is related to Jill's question, which was, what makes you prefer Archer and Olive notebooks to the Leuchtturm 1917 notebooks? And that one would just have to be paper quality. Personally, I find that with the LT 1917s, the paper is just too see-through for me to find the journal enjoyable to use. I have preferred the Archer and Olive because the paper is a lot thicker. Though one issue I found with the Archer and Olive is that because the journal is a bit more expensive, I feel like the things that I should be putting in there should be a lot more aesthetic. That was likely part of the reason that I had my planner slump in February and March, because I kind of felt that the spreads I was making weren't really doing this quality paper justice. Our next question comes from Anita, who asked, what are some of the jobs you thought about doing before deciding on teaching? Well, I really wanted to be a teacher for quite a while before I actually became one, but since I was little, some of the jobs that I wanted to do, I wanted to be a florist, I wanted to own a candy store, and then I realised you can't, you can't just eat all the candy, so kind of got rid of that dream pretty quickly. I wanted to be a brain surgeon, uh, I wanted to be, I think, a firefighter at one stage. I wanted to join the Navy at one point, but I can't swim, and the Navy's kind of known for being on boats, so maybe not the most suitable one for me. I wanted to be a radiologist. Secretly and on the down low, I wanted to be a singer. But I can't write songs and I can't read music, so maybe not. I wanted to be an event organizer or a wedding planner. And that's, I think, all of the ones that come to mind. Our next question comes from Daphne, who said, I love watching your The Week That Was videos, especially when you hang out with friends and colleagues. I definitely want to talk to my friends and family more. 
However, I always find that it takes a lot of energy out of me, so I wind up not talking to anyone for a while. Do you have any advice on how to be more social with people? Some general pointers would be to start small. Don't feel like you have to get in touch with everyone at once to start being more social. Another thing I also find to be quite helpful is keeping the circle of people that I contact the most quite small. I do have a larger, wider group of friends, but the people that I'm in contact with the most often, I can count on pretty much one hand. My smaller, closer circle, I'll endeavour to keep in touch with more often, whereas my wider circle, the main way that I keep in touch with them is via group chats. The nice part about a group chat is that you aren't the one who's solely responsible for the conversation continuing. That can make it a little bit less taxing in terms of your energy to keep the conversation going. Also, if there are some ways of socialising that are more taxing on your energy, you can always choose to avoid those and opt in for the ones that aren't as energy taxing. For instance, being the one to organise a dinner out with your friends may be too energy consuming, but having a pizza night in may be a bit more manageable. Of course, these are just my suggestions. Typically one of the biggest hurdles I have when it comes to socialising with people is that before the event, I kind of talk myself into thinking I don't want to go. Saying things like, oh, it's going to be too much effort, I couldn't be bothered, I'm too tired, stuff like that. And then when I get there, I do end up having a really enjoyable time. One of the nice things about my close circle is that they're pretty accommodating for the fact that sometimes I just don't want to hang out. Sometimes I am too tired, or I'm just not in the mood. The nice thing is that they don't take it personally, and I don't take it personally if the roles are reversed. Thank you to all of our inquirers, and everybody who shared their self-care suggestions from my question on last week's video. A question that I have for you guys this week though, what would be your one product that you have to have for bullet journaling? As I said, what I really need to have is a journal with good quality paper but I'd love to know what you guys thought. There we go. So as you can see, I have a space for each day of the week, a space for my task list, and then the only thing I'm gonna be tracking is gonna be steps. Mostly just cause now I'm back at school, I'm getting a fair few more steps in and it's been enjoyable to track that again. I'm feeling good about this layout. Hopefully it'll keep me productive for next week. It would have been nice to have a little bit less orange and a little bit more of my red tones, but I do think this layout is going to work well. With that said, thank you for watching team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you wanted to see more from me feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!